What is up, Diecast Collectors? This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy, and welcome back to another NASCAR Diecast review on my YouTube channel. Today we're reviewing another 2020 Diecast that is slowly starting to dry up. It didn't really dry up as much as uh, the Sickard car, but I told myself I couldn't miss out on this one, and I got this full car at you know full retail price from Jack's Racing Collectibles. You guys saw my haul video. You guys probably know what it is. It's the other 2020 car I did not review yet from that haul. It is John Hunter Nemechek's. And yes, I said Nemechek because Lionel actually spelled Nemechek's name right this time compared to the Trump 164. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but I thought that was pretty damn hilarious. But wow, I mean. Once again, the renders didn't look too good about this car, but in person, man, especially with the details I've noticed right here with the tiger stripes. Oh, man, this die cast is something I'm looking forward to review, man. I mean, um, if you guys missed out on the sick art car, like I just said, this is the car to get right here, especially since you guys know Nemechek is no longer going to be the driver of the 38 car next, uh, for this year. Anthony Alfredo is, so the pasta man himself is going to be driving in this, uh, hopefully, if they bring this paint team back. But we're going to be looking at this uh, 2020 variant as we're going to kick off this diecast review in the official unboxing of the uh, John Hunter Nemechek 2020 Skag Power Equipment Ford Mustang for Front Row Motorsports. Alrighty, everybody, we got this diecast out of its box, and wow, first glance, this diecast is pretty dang cool. I am already loving the tiger stripes on this. I mean, uh, I really, I mean, I, when we first saw this paint scheme, I really didn't notice those stripes that much, but then once I watched, uh, when I was watching the diecast reviews from Diecast Buffet, um, and also Low Wrangler's take on it, I mean, both of them had very unique things to say about these cars, which, by the way, those two guys Really damn cool, guys. I mean, heck, I feel like when me and Race Day 2011, you know, finally hang up the helmets, I mean, I think those guys are going to carry on over with the diecast community. But uh, for now, I mean, we might be the old farts, but we're still kicking, and hell, we're not going anywhere anytime soon. But at least we got some backup just in case something happens to us. I mean, hell, <laughs> if we get hit by a freaking bus or something, I think those guys will cover our asses. <laughs> but just kidding, though. I mean, all three of those guys are awesome. Check them out. Um... I think Rob's like the only one left that hasn't reviewed this yet. But, you know, I mean, when it comes to, you know, the four of us, three of the four of us are going to review, you know, the 2020 NASCAR diecast because, you know, that's just how we are. But this is a great diecast, guys. And um, apparently, um, yeah, uh, well, yeah, back to what I said about this car. I mean, um, yeah, Diecast Buffet had his own intake about this. You know, he kind of called these uh, tiger stripes, you know, uh, you know, it kind of reminds of, you know, Tony Ty Tony the Tiger of the Frosted Flakes, you know. They're great. And then, of course, Lil Wrangler being, you know, a big Cincinnati Bengals fan. Um, by the way, next year's going to be looking good for you guys with Joe Burrow returning, hopefully, because, damn, that kid is good. <laughs> and hoping he's making a good, speedy recovery after that, you know, horrific injury he had. But, uh, yeah. But, yeah, I'll be secretly cheering for you guys. <laughs> Unless you go up against my bills, then, yeah, then we're going to have a problem. <laughs> I'm just kidding. A nice little friendly competition can't hurt. But, yeah, I mean, so easily, if you are a big Bengals fan, or if you really like your stripes like Tony the Tiger, this is a great diecast to get. I think my only critique about this, and I think Lord Wrangler pointed this out, is that, I mean, I understand this is their logo, Skag Power Equipment's logo. Um, the red just looks very out of place. I understand it's their logo, but I don't know. I think if it was orange or just all white, um, I think it would look a little bit better. Like, this logo is perfect. I do like that a lot. I mean, this paint scheme really flows well. And apparently the tiger stripes aren't random. Apparently they have to, it's part of, from one of their products. Uh, like, I think it's like for one of their lawnmowers, I think, from what I know. Um, I don't know that that's just what when I heard from a little Wrangler's video. I mentioned him a lot because he just recently reviewed this car and I still have some of this stuff fresh in my head. So <laughs> thank you, little Wrangler. You kind of reminded me to review this car because I totally forgot to have this thing. By the way, is this thing missing a rivet or something or am I going crazy? I don't know. Because that's a different looking rivet than this one. I don't know. <laughs> Anybody who does custom work, I mean, tell me if that's normal or not. But, um, yeah, but apparently, um, yeah, uh, uh, the actual company, uh, uh, Skag Power Equipment, actually commented on both those videos. So, I don't know, third time's a charm. Maybe they'll give me some more insight about this because uh, that's pretty cool when you got companies out there that go in and, you know, um, that comment on our videos. I mean, uh, Contact, when I reviewed the Jeff Gernhardt Contact car, they messaged me and they said they appreciate the reviews. So, um, you know, if Skag is watching this right now, I definitely appreciate you guys uh, watching this because, you know what, man, uh, this is a very very cool looking paint scheme you guys definitely did a fantastic job with this design um the colors work well together i mean uh i understand it's a power equipment but man i tell you what man if i was a kid and i was looking at this car 
Oh boy, I would get it. I would get it. I mean, I still am because I am a big diecast collector because the orange really pops. And, you know, I mean, the front row motorsport schemes haven't really been exciting for me, but this one really caught my eye. And once again, can't thank Jack's Race Collectibles for, you know, hooking me up. Uh, one thing I'm definitely not liking, though, uh, I couldn't really tell right here, but Lionel's quality control, you can see right there, yikes, decal overlap, and a big old paint chip. So, nice quality control right there. I mean, can't blame anybody but Lionel on their parts, but hey, whatever, though, it is what it is. A nice little gap right there in the window banner too but hey typical line on quality on uh, the black interior looks really nice on this paint team i will admit but yeah john name i believe he drove this car if i'm not mistaken four races both at the uh at, at, at the uh two the first two donaldson races because remember we drove donaldson for three times because you know the pandemic that why well, that's that uh, plus the big hint right here you see why it was driven at Darlington because we got the, that was the name of the spot, the sponsor of the race that returned from NASCAR, the Rio Hills 400. So that's pretty cool that they added that. I mean, uh, NASCAR kind of experimented with these, uh, kind of like with the playoff emojis and all that. I think these look a little bit better than those stupid emojis and the, the NBC logo and the Snapchat logo. Oh, God. You know, they ruined that Johnson throwback when, when they added those stupid freaking logos on it. But... It's better than, you know, switching the number to a side where it shouldn't belong. Well, no, that's just my opinion. We'll get back pretty soon. Simply the best. Well, I'm sure their power equipment, Skag's power equipment, is simply the best. But I can't really say the same thing about Lionel because look at that right there. That is not good Lionel quality. That's supposed to be normal quality. So, yeah. What does I tell you right there? Look at that. Even half the rookie stripe literally just got, you know, flaked off. Like, shoot. But yeah, beautiful paint scheme. I think actually John Nemechek got a top 10 in this car, if I'm not mistaken, at the first Donaldson race. But all the other races, uh, I think, what, like the second Donaldson race, didn't ran too well, finished like 35th. And then uh, the other two um, races, which I believe, uh, I mean, finished like 13th. It was the second Charlotte race right after the 600 and uh, the spring Bristol race. So, you know, he had some pretty good runs besides, you know, one bad race. Uh, hopefully we can probably see the sponsorship return in his truck because you guys know he's going, he's going, uh, I wouldn't say going down, but, you know, he's going back to the truck series to hopefully probably earn, some, uh, earn himself a championship because KBM needs to needs to find some good guys. And John Nemechek, I think, is the way to go. Get him more developed and, you know, probably get him back up in the ranks again. And maybe we'll get him a better ride next time. Um, not saying front row was the best ride, but you can definitely tell he out, out, outperformed that equipment. But we'll see what Anthony Alfredo does. And I don't know, maybe Skag will um, sponsor both those guys or they will carry all over their sponsorship to... Uh, one of the front row guys, maybe Alfredo, but we'll see. I mean, only time will tell. But anyways, guys, this has been OBB, the Diecast News Guy. Thank you guys so much for watching this Diecast review of the John Hunter Nemechek 2020 Skag Power Equipment Ford Mustang for uh, Front Row Motorsports. If you guys enjoyed this Diecast review along with other NASCAR Diecast reviews, hit that subscribe button and bell icon today so you guys stay up to date for all the latest NASCAR Diecast videos, including 2021 Diecast, because we're getting there, guys, another month or two, and we'll be getting on that roll. But um, until then, guys, this has been OBB. Catch you guys next time on another NASCAR Nightcast review very soon.